Okay, we're going to be looking at how to get a grade 9 functions type question. So this will be quite a tricky question on a GCC paper. But we start off with a nice straightforward question of find the value of f of 11. So what we do is we put our 11 where the x is. So everywhere there's an x we put 11. So we get f of 11 is equal to 2 times 11 over 11 minus 1, which equals 22 over 10. Or we could say 11 over 5. Or 2.2 would be perfectly OK as well. Now we want to state which value of x must be excluded from any domain of f. Now, if we go to and have a quick look at the function, Here's our function here. We've drawn f of x equals 2x over x minus 1. The domain is all your x values. Okay, and you can see that this everywhere here, an x value hits the graph. Then we get to a point here where there is no, it appears to be no um, value where if you put 1 in, you get a value out. And the reason is, if we do 2 times 1, we get 2. But if you do 1 minus 1, you get 0. And 2 divided by 0 is undefined. You cannot work out 2 divided by 0. So therefore, at 1, we get this 0 on the bottom. So therefore, our domain has no definition when x equals 1. So, and you notice, everywhere else we have a graph. So to go back to our question, the value that must be excluded from any domain of f is x equals 1. All right? And when you've got these fractions, you just basically solve x minus 1 equals 0. Whatever the bottom is gives you 0. So therefore x equals 1 is what we exclude from our domain. Now to find the inverse function of f of, of, f of x is what f minus 1 of x is. There is a technique where we let y equal 2x over x minus 1 and then we rearrange it to make x a subject. So we get y times x minus 1 equals 2x. Multiply this out, and we find that we've got x in two different places and y in two different places. And what we want to do, we want to make x a subject, so let's group all the x's together. So let's take this yx here and put it over with the 2x. So we get minus y equals 2x minus yx. And then we can make x a subject by factorising this out. So you get minus y equals x to minus y. So we take an x out as a common factor, and then we can divide by 2 minus y to get it on its own. So you get minus y over 2 minus y equals x. So what we do, this is our inverse function, but we don't write it in terms of y because we're saying what happens to x. Okay, so we're saying what happens to x, and what would be better is also to change this as it looks better. If we times that by minus 1, we get y. Times that by minus 1, we get minus 2. Times that by minus 1, we get y. So we get y over y plus 2 is equal to y over y minus 2. And as I said, for the inverse, all we do is we switch that back into an x. So we say f of f inverse f minus 1 of x is equal to x over x minus 2. Right, and we can check the inverse. Okay, If we now put 11 fifths into this, what we should do is we should get back to 11. So you've got 11 fifths over 11 fifths minus 2. Well, 11 fifths minus 2 is just 1 fifth. 11 fifths divided by 1 fifth is 11. So this does get us back to 11. So it is our, is a good inverse function. It appears to work. And there's a good check of this being our inverse function. State the value which cannot be in any range of f. So let's go back to our graph again. Finding the range, it's really important to be able to draw your graph. So here's our graph here, f of x, and here it is here. And the range is all the y values it can take on. And you notice if you draw the graph, it doesn't take on a value of 2. So how can we find that value of 2 normally? And there's a couple of ways we can do it. There's a really simple way with the inverse. So let's just draw the inverse. There's the inverse function drawn. And you find the inverse function by reflecting the original graph in the line y equals x. So the red line reflected in here gives me the blue line. 
So that means if you reflect in the line y equals x, all the y values become x values for the inverse function, all the x values become y values for the real function. So therefore, when we're looking at the inverse function, this blue one, the domain of the inverse function is actually the range of the real function. Notice the blue function doesn't exist for x2 and the red function doesn't exist for x y is 2. And similarly, what's not in the domain of the red function, so the red function doesn't exist for 1, and the blue function, the range doesn't exist for 1. So the range and domains flip from the inverse from the function to the inverse function. So we could use the fact that if there's not going to be in the range of f, it's not going to be in the domain of g. And not to be in the domain of g means the bottom of this fraction can't equal 2, so it's where x equals 2, so where the bottom can't equal 0, so therefore x equals 2. So that is one way to do it. Let's go back to this. So we can say that 2 is cannot be in any range of f. Now, another that's one way to do it, which relies on you finding the inverse and remembering that the domain of the inverse is the range of the function. So therefore, what can't go into the domain of the inverse can't go into the range of the function. Now, I'm going to show you a couple more ways to deepen your understanding. You can stop right now if you're quite happy to, but let's just look at a couple more ways to look deepen our understanding. So the other way is to see where this 2 comes in the original function, and that's to realise we can find this value 2 by looking at what happens when x gets either very big or when x gets very small. So let's do that in looking at the algebra. We don't need to be able to draw the function, we just need to be able to do the algebra. So if we take this function f of x and make it equal to 2x over x minus 1. If x gets really big, here's the easiest way to do it. If x gets really big, say x is a billion, 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 then this minus 1 will make no di almost no difference. It'll make less of a difference as x gets bigger. So we can just cross out that minus 1 and ignore it. So the only things that make a difference are the 2x and the x, and 2x divided by x is just equal to 2. So basically what I'm saying is, as x gets really, really big, this value is going to get closer and closer to 2. So if you remember, the function, as x got very big, got closer and closer to the value of 2. Also, if you did minus x, you see you'd, you'd get 2 times minus a very big number over minus a very big number, still going to get me 2. So when you're coming this way as well, it's also going to get to 2. All right. So that is another way where you can find the range is by working out the horizontal asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote is found out by looking at what happens when x gets very big in these fraction type functions. Anyway, there's two ways of finding the range of f. Um, I hope that makes life easier for you.